One day, one of his wives was out digging a latrine behind the tent and struck some of this black stuff which came up out of the ground and he became instantly very rich indeed. Some of that money is promised to put into classic wings, but I've got a... Des is anybody up? I say, if this aeroplane starts pointing at you, ladies and gentlemen, duck, because this is... Oh, he's got it going straight and level. Now, that's not bad. And he's way... Oh, he's got both hands off the stick. <laughs> Any minute now, he's going to jump out. I think that's the plan. He's been told that if you can't get this aeroplane on the ground in one piece, fly it very slowly, unstrap, and jump out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to book the Classic Wings flight, you too can fly in this aeroplane. Bit of a poacher turn gamekeeper. So wonderful. That was really nice. And now for something, if anything, even nice. Look at this. The latest from the fighter collection. And this is Nick Gray. <laughs> Come out here and do this. Come on, Henry. You're the man. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks a bunch. It's that Nick Gray flying. It's Stephen Gray's son. The pilot for Britannia Airways, first captain on first sorry, captain on Boeing 757s, and uh, he can uh, make a Boeing do very similar things to this, I'm told, but uh, not, I think, when passengers are on board. Uh, the P-63 King Cobra, quite a collection of uh, had this aircraft for. Uh, about 18 months, maybe two years, and completed a total rebuild this year. And this is one of its fellow was actually stationed here uh, for a short period during the war uh, as part of the 8th Air Force. Rotangil Whiskey Romeo. During the war was one 37 millimeter M4 cannon, which fired through the prop. Two wing mounted and two nose mounted, a respectable 410 miles an hour at 25,000 feet, and its service ceiling was 43,000 feet, which uh, is a very, very good ceiling for a World War II aircraft. Range in service without cock tanks, about 450 miles. of course has been flying with the uh, fighter connection for many years. He's their senior training pilot and uh, is current on all the warbirds. display from Barry Tempest uh, in the Tiger Moth a few minutes ago. The exhaust flaming. Is that? I didn't see that, but she's changed it. It's coming in right behind you again. That's the end of the runway. We've got five. Spider collection land back on. Control slightly across to give you a really nice view of the top of the aircraft. I see the pilot. Spitfire display pilot in the country, if not in the world. Boss on the propeller there, very distinctive. David breaks off. Oh, yeah. Caroline is now becoming well known in uh, 
run the flying display world. Will easily run away. Here comes the Messerschmitt 109. This aircraft here and captured for a month later uh, on the G variant to be captured and to fall into Allied hands and so it was brought back to England for evaluation. Period. It was painted in a Royal Air Force colour scheme, which was a sort of dank grey with round hoods. Number RN228. And indeed, on the video, the black 6 feet condition. The only rules and stipulations that the Air Force made was, uh, don't expect any money from us, uh, and you will have to get voluntary labour uh, and all the bits and pieces you need uh, from your own resources. Instrumentation, German armament, and of course the original Daimler-Benz engine. belongs to the Ministry of Defence, but is on loan to the Imperial War Museum, uh, brings it down straight towards Crown Centre, 250 miles an hour, pulls it up at a very gentle 3G manoeuvre. And over the top. Here's ahead. This aircraft will be flying all next season, both here at Duxford and throughout air shows throughout the country. And Tempest Tiger Moth crazy flying stunt. And uh, thanks to everybody for inviting us all up to take part in the commentary. Have a safe journey home. Oh, he's scared, That's the end then of the Duxford Portland Airshow. Just show the act.
Cheerio now, Moxie! Mrs. 